Hello, welcome back to another video presented by Acuity PPM, where today we're covering resource capacity planning in Acuity PPM software. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to our channel because we're putting out great content that you don't want to miss that will help you better manage your PMO and your portfolio. So with that, resource capacity planning is one of the most talked about functions of portfolio management, and it's also super difficult. If you're interested in learning more, check out our, our video on best practices and capacity planning, as well as the challenges of resource capacity planning. This video is going to focus on using Acuity PPM software, but we're going to cover a little background before jumping in. And the first question is, what is resource capacity planning? Well, it's a critical component of, of good portfolio management that involves two fundamental pieces of information. The first is resource availability, which is our capacity. It's the total available time that we have to get work done. Forecasted utilization is the planned time that we have allocated or forecasted to get work done in the future. So it's a forward-looking view. How much time do we have to do work? And what is our planned utilization to do work in the future? And this helps answer two key questions. The first is, when do we have capacity to take on new work? This is a portfolio-oriented view, looking into the future. Leaders ask this all the time. When can we take on new projects? The second is a project-oriented view. Do we have the resources needed to complete our committed work on time? And we'll show you how Acuity helps answer both those questions. We've shared this diagram in other places, but it really highlights how capacity planning involves several moving parts. And we're only going to summarize that it begins with good project planning. It requires a project team to define the scope of their work, to define the tasks required to get the work done, or even a work breakdown structure. It requires estimating the duration of the work and then the relative effort needed to get that work done. This is the foundation of resource management and resource capacity planning. At the portfolio level, we need a way of aggregating this making it as easy as possible for leaders to review the information and then make decisions. And finally, there's the notion of a top-down versus a bottom-up plan. And Acuity specifically takes on a philosophy that we're focused on top-down resource planning. At a schedule level, most project teams begin with a top-down plan. It's a high-level estimate of the start and finish dates, key milestones, maybe the dates of the phases, etc. But as the project team digs into the details and creates a detailed project plan, it turns into a bottom-up schedule, that understanding the activities and tasks needed, estimating against that, and then creating a realistic project plan and schedule. Some organizations try to do this at the resource level, but it becomes very challenging to maintain. This is one of the things that we're trying to overcome with Acuity PPM software, is to make resource capacity planning easier for teams to do so that senior leaders can make better strategic decisions. So our focus is on top-down resource planning. Yes, it's not 100% accurate, but the goal is to have good enough data so that you can make better decisions on it because projects change regularly and you'd rather have your team spending time managing the project rather than uh, data entry and data maintenance of all that resource information if you are tracking it at a task level. So even though there's a disconnect between top-down and bottom-up planning, it's acceptable for capacity planning purposes. And you'll see this again in Acuity. So with that, I think you're all familiar, we're at the project list. We're going to take a look at this banking mobile app. Everybody's building mobile apps. We're gonna drill down and we're gonna go over specifically to the resource plan. And one of the things to highlight is that Acuity has heat mapping at the project level. Resource capacity planning is based on the underlying project resource plans. 
And so we allow project teams to create a resource plan directly in Acuity. For this project, it's only a few months long. We've got key uh, team members, four of them in this case, and you can see we've got a top-down estimate. What Acuity is highlighting here is that for certain months, these resources are overutilized. Now, at the individual project level, nobody is over 100%. But this, in, this color coding or this heat mapping indicates that these individuals are working on other projects that in total push them above uh, a certain threshold. Maybe it's 125% utilization. And as a result, we can see from this resource plan that it's not realistic in the month of June. Even if this was the number one project, there are other competing projects that these four people are assigned to that could make it challenging to get work done. This is helping us answer the question, can we realistically deliver our projects? In later months, we can see that some of the resources are simply at risk. That might mean that they're 100% utilized, but they're at risk if they take on any more work. And in other cases, there are months where they're not overutilized, so they're, they're readily available. And we can see this for the project manager in the summer, in summer and early fall. So this is an enhancement to Acuity's resource planning that we've got heat mapping available at the project level. Now, if we were to roll this up and we go to click on the resource tab, I'm going to firstly collapse, and this shows us a heat map at the team level or by role. And so we can see that project managers and business analysts are completely overutilized over the summer and even into the fall, whereas other teams have availability. We can expand this, and we can see that if we want to take on a new project, maybe Derek in the month of July has some availability to start new work. Otherwise, the project management team is extremely overutilized. Probably some project work needs to be taken off their plate. If I drill down to look at Derek's plan, we can see that he's assigned 10% for non-project work. This is necessary to capture the amount of non-project time because virtually everybody has some percentage of time where they're in staff meetings or checking email or doing day-to-day -day work. And then we can see a breakdown of all the project work. Some of these projects finish and as long as they're shown as active, they'll show up even though we can see there's no time against those that would imply that that's when the project finishes. So. This gives us a roll-up, both of the team and the individual, the non-project work and the project work. At the top, we have a resource dashboard that highlights which teams are available in the given month. Now we can scroll forward backwards, we can change this around, we can even filter like we can with the mini dashboard. Each organization can change the threshold at which an individual is available or at risk or overutilized. In this example, anything over 125% is considered overutilized. 80 to 125% is considered at risk. So this view helps us answer the question, when can we take on new work? Clearly, I need a project manager, likely need a business analyst, and if I want to start a new project, I'm unlikely to be able to start a project this summer unless I take other actions, such as hiring consultants, canceling existing work, reducing the scope of current projects. There's a few levers that can be pulled in order to start new projects. But if I want to use team members already available in the organization, I'm very limited unless I take some other actions. So this is an overview 
of how Acuity PPM can help you manage resource capacity in your organization. If you have questions, reach out to us at sales at acuityppm.com or go to our website and at acuityppm.com and schedule a demo where you can learn more about how we can help you manage your portfolio. Thank you.